What I have before me is a $2,000 brick with 20 terabytes of inaccessible data on it. So part of the problem with network attached storage is if something goes wrong, you can't really service it. It's not like if we did a DIY server, which is by the way, what we're doing next. And we have here a problem with either the power supply or the motherboard or the power board or some proprietary component inside of this Synology DS1515 Plus. It's apparently a very common issue. And if you push the power button, it doesn't come on anymore. So today we're gonna try and troubleshoot this and see what the heck is going on and if there's a good way to fix it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. Quick backstory on this. So it's a 20 terabyte RAID, which means 14 terabytes is accessible and usable by us. We have all of our B-roll on here, compressed and uncompressed. We have our finished files on here that get uploaded to YouTube. We have our product designs, our logos, our software, basically everything except for really critical business tax documents, stuff like that. And we've got a, a remote backup through a backup service that has some of that stuff backed up about uh, well, most of the finished files, most of the really important stuff is there, but there's some stuff on here that we need, like brand new product files we've been working on, things that we haven't backed up yet because they're like new this week. And that will be addressed later, working on a better backup solution. So anyway, this is a Syn Synology NAS. It's a really common point of failure for this particular model and other models made in this year to not turn on anymore, which is great. It's the best thing to deal with in a business is to just randomly have all your operations grind to a halt for seemingly no good reason. And another problem with this series of NAS is not just the power delivery randomly dying, but also the Intel processor that's in here, it's some Atom or something, it's got uh, some security vulnerabilities, and then it also has its own issue of randomly dying. So I was kind of hoping that we got one of the updated ones thinking, well, we're a media outlet, they should send us a good one, but nope. They didn't cherry pick it. So uh, we got what any customer would get, which is a dead NAS. And we I've already purchased a replacement. Unfortunately, the problem with some of this is that in order to migrate the RAID and not lose all the data, I did have to buy another Synology NAS. But our next move is going to be a custom server. And that's something we're working on for a couple of months from now. I've built servers for our web server in the past. It's not a big deal, but we should just do that at this point. Because the thing is, with this, it doesn't work and I can't really do much about it because it's all proprietary parts for the most part. So yes, I can buy a new power supply for the unit on eBay. It'll get here in three or four weeks from China. I can buy maybe a motherboard for it, but it's unlikely. And motherboard failures are pretty common and a lot of them are already bought. So that leaves us with the question of what the hell do we do to get our data that's not backed up yet off of this thing safely and make sure that we can continue to operate. So again, the problem is with these things, they are not user serviceable. And if I build my own damn NAS, which I'm capable of, but decided not to, because this seemed like one of those, you plug it in and it just works types of, type of thing. And it did just work for a couple of years, but when it didn't just work anymore, it was potentially a catastrophic failure that cost the business a lot of money, a lot of files and, uh, stuff that we can't really get back or recreate. So that's the problem with it. If this happened on my own server I built, and I knew it's a motherboard or a CPU or a power supply, I have shelves of those components, and I can swap it out in 15 minutes and be done. Whereas this might take me weeks to get a power supply. I might never be able to get a motherboard, or it won't be feasible in terms of price. So let me show you a couple of things here. First of all, we'll save everyone some time. You can unlock these drives which the lock is really just kind of stupid anyway, but you can unlock the drives and pull them out. And in doing so, uh, it will sometimes help to completely reset everything. So this is a troubleshooting step I already did. Basically you pull every drive out, label them so that you know what order they go back in, what slots, so you can recover the RAID. But if you have this problem, pull all the drives out first, 
let it sit, leave it alone, unplug the power and see if it turns back on. Hopefully it does. And if it doesn't turn back on, that should that's pretty close to resetting CMOS, like in terms of what it does for recovery. It doesn't turn back on. Here's a, a thing I learned the past few days. You open this thing up, that's ATX power. In fact, actually, completely unintentional plugging of our mod mat, which I'm using right now. So let's take a look at this. This is uh, very well planned by accident. What we have here, let's take a look at uh, green because there's only really one of them. So green and ground right here. That's going to be the fourth pin over on its row. And it's got a black on either side and a blue over here and then an orange on the end. So this is our mod mat. You go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick it up if you want it. It's a great modding and building service, but it also has pinout diagrams like this. So let's look over at the pinout now. So I said there's an, an orange, blue, black, green. Orange, blue, black, green, black, uh, black, black, and then it should be blank. Yep, blank. Red, 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 and then it should be black. Yep. So this is actually the same pinout as an ATX 24 pin uh, power plug, which means we can actually just plug in a computer power supply and see if this is a power supply problem and start troubleshooting from there. These get these are super tightly crammed in there, so I use a flathead to just pry it out. So we can unplug that. And now what we're going to do is a simple uh, test with a power supply tester. So here's one of those that I happen to already have, fortunately. So we can just plug this in right here. OK, so it's got power. So this is a power supply tester. It's got all the different voltages on the front of it. So there's like 12, 5, so forth. And one of our 12 volt rails over here is not reporting 12 volt. The L.L .L indicator that you're seeing on this 12 volt line really just means that there's no EPS 12 volt cable connected. So this actually seems like it passes the test. We're still not really sure what the problem is. The problem further is that the hard drive power is a special connector. So hard drive power is in here. A, a whole bunch of red, 5 volt, a whole bunch of yellow, 12 volt, bunch of black for ground. That is not a standard power supply connector. So a few solutions here. One is if this is a power supply problem, and if this cable is also bad or whatever is the power delivery in general is bad, I could solder Molex or SATA connectors to these solder the red, yellow, and black wires together, and it would work. It'd just take a day because it's a lot of cables. Or I can order a replacement, $350 to replace this stupid power supply, which is like under 300 watts. 250-watt custom power supply, 350 bucks. Ships from China won't get here for four weeks. That's un unacce unacceptable. So that leaves us with a troubleshooting option, which is going to be, well, let's plug in a computer ATX power supply. So I pulled this one out that we weren't using. And all that happens here is I plug in this 24 pin, which has the same, I mean, it's all blackout cables, unfortunately, but same exact pin out as you saw in our mod mat, uh, which is on here, so it's safe. So we can plug this in to the motherboard. And I'll just go ahead and plug again that mod mat. The pin out diagrams have helped us significantly for PCIe fans and for 24 pin now. So if you do want it, grab it. The next round will be here within, I think it should be shipping to us already. Actually, yes, it is shipping to us already. So that means it'll be going out to you guys within about a week or so of filming this. So anyway, plugged in. Uh, what we're not going to do is plug in anything down here except for this power supply. So this one still needs to get power. And I don't know if this 24 pin needs to be jumped. I don't know if it will even do anything. But we're just going to go ahead and plug in a jumper cable anyway, because why not? And we're going to leave these hard drive cables plugged in. So now the unit needs power and the EVGA power supply needs power. So let me plug those in. OK, so plugging everything in. And now, in theory, all I have to do is flip the switch on the EVGA power supply and push the button on here. Is it on? Yes. So you can see that blue light blinking now. So our NAS has gone from being completely 100% unresponsive on the Synology DS1515 Plus. Doesn't work. 20 terabytes minus the provisioning space, but or the rounding space. Call it 14 terabytes. 14 terabytes potentially gone. 
Again, we have some of it backed up. I'm not that stupid, but some, not everything is. Some of the B-roll, for example, we don't need it. It's not desperate need uh, to back it up, but we didn't have it backed up and I would want it. So either way, it's several terabytes of data, some of it more uh, expensive to lose than others. And we're able to access it now. And in order to get the drives to kick on, I just have to plug in an ethernet cable. So they're not on. If we plug in, let's just plug that in just to kind of prove a point here. We got the power on beep and we have green status LED. We have a LAN LED on. Everything appears to be working. So not sure if it's a dead power supply or dead power delivery or bad motherboard or bad power board or whatever, but it's working now. And uh, basically the problem here boils down to something that is not necessarily easy to fix. This is okay. It's not a difficult fix, but clearly we can't just operate. I mean, we could, but you don't really want to operate with just an external power, like ATX power supply sitting outside your NAS. Uh, Cause I don't know how trustworthy that, I don't know what other kinds of problems that could introduce. The, the power is no longer coming from the same source. So we're splitting power from one power supply for the hard drives. And this power supply is clearly already either defective or something's wrong with the 24 pin specifically. And then another power supply for the rest. So not really something you want to trust your business with. And uh, at this point, we have, like I said, most of it's backed up. I can pull everything else off now that I want, now that it's bootable, and then start getting this thing out the door. And we have to buy another Synology box just to migrate the RAID. I'm going to download it locally first for safety, all that stuff. Don't, don't worry about us in terms of making sure the data is safe, because I will. It'll be fine. But uh, this is a problem that I've always had with NASA's. And now I think our next step is going to be building a server, which I wanted to do this for a while. We built our web server. It's all Linux and everything. Not a big deal for us to do. Just kind of waiting on the Silverstone CS381, I think, that we showed you at Computex. I really want to use that case for our server. So once we have our own server, the motherboard dies, power supply dies, whatever. We've got a whole shelf of them. And uh, we're going to be a bit safer with the raids and stuff like that. Still gonna have a NAS, it'll still do local file storage for test data, for backups. We have remote backups. It'll all be and is presently safe in terms of data. But I wanted to show you the troubleshooting steps here. So if you run into this problem with one of these types of boxes or another one, fortunately, it's not too difficult to fix this particular problem, but um, that's if you have this specific problem. The greater issue still lies that all this stuff is semi proprietary and not necessarily easy to get your hands on, especially for an older unit where it's just not on eBay anymore or something like that. And none of it's a permanent fix anyway. So that is the NAS problem we have that almost cost us a lot of data and a lot of money. Uh, but we're good now and uh, learned from it, obviously, and we'll be moving to a better solution in the future though I did still have to spend like $1,200 unexpectedly on a replacement NAS because Synology was not able to send one out on emergency notice, which is fine. We don't really talk with them too much anyway, so uh, that's understandable, but it was a big unexpected expense, and once this is done with, we'll never have to deal with it again, fortunately. So that's it for this one. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up the mod mat that we showed in this video. It was an awesome, very organic plug for that one. I'm pretty happy with it, actually. I'm almost at, almost at Linus levels of plugging stuff. Uh, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out there if you prefer. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.